Hello everyone, welcome back to Foot FM with West Ham United and we are getting into the business end of the season today. The January transfer window did close between episodes and you might remember from last time we are on quite a good run of form. We started last episode with an 8-1 thrashing, oh no we ended the episode before with an 8-1 thrashing of Man United and then followed through with good performances against Spurs and Liverpool uh, and Everton. Uh, there was a disappointing defeat to Arsenal, but at the moment we are still in both the Europa League and FA Cup fifth round. We've taken on at Bristol and Fiorentina respectively um, today. We also have very winnable games against Bournemouth, Watford and West Brom to come, but the first thing we need to do is open a pack. And you might remember from last episode, we were in sixth place at the end of last episode. We're only one point outside of the top four. So we're getting very close to a 100k pack. But we need to open a 50k players pack. I'm not desperate to bring people in at the moment. So I'm only going to bring in a top, top quality player. Um, and having a look at who's come out of here, nobody is really jumping out of me. Tagliafico is another... Um, uh, is a duplicate player that we've already had in the past. Um... Corona, not really interested in Savage, don't really care about. Bartra could be an interesting one. And Kondogbia, mm, his rating's not very high for what he used to be in the games, both football manager and FIFA. So I'll have a quick look, but as it stands, uh, Carnesis might be the only player I'd bring in just because we are desperate for a new goalkeeper who might be better than Kune. Uh, I will have a look at Mark Batra, who appears to be wearing some kind of eye makeup in this photo um, but I will let you know in just a few seconds who I have brought in. So I have decided to bring in uh, Carnesis. He's not as good as Kune but given we had a really poor um, backup goalkeeper in Raphael Spiegel when he did have to step in for Kune he was quite good for us but hopefully Carnesis will add a bit of depth to the squad. We also did bring in Mark Bartra just because he's quite a good player. I'm also going to let Omaruo leave the squad as a result, because he's not quite as good as I would like him to be, and Barcha is just a better option. Who does play in the centre of defence can also play outright. So, um, Omaruo's contract is terminated. That'll be a nice free transfer for somebody to take. He really wasn't too bad for us in the games that he played, but Barcha is just a better option. So, after saying that I wasn't going to make too many changes, we have brought two players in, but the focus now switches to beating Bournemouth and Watford in the league. So for the game against Bournemouth, Mark Barcher is making his debut alongside John Stones. That could be a central defensive partnership for quite a long time. We've got Paulista who can also fill in there. So that's quite a good, strong part of the team now. We've also got Munir out on the right. Tagliafico continues on the left with Campbell and Carvalho in the centre. Peto's on the left wing with Veya on the right wing. And their old partnership of Vieto and Dini are up top. Fraser's corner for Bournemouth cleared out. He sends the ball back in, and Wilshire has hammered that inside the near post. And Bournemouth have taken the lead, but Mark Pugh is offside. I don't know how he was interfering with that goal. He wasn't in the keeper's eye line, but the game has decided he was offside, and we have a lucky escape. Tagliafico on the left, swings the ball across, it's cleared out. It's William Carvalho to Veya, and Federici with a great save, tipping that onto the post. Fraser to Wilshire, slips it through for Callum Wilson, who finishes it clinically to put Bournemouth ahead and this time there's no question of offside. Wilsh has played the ball over the top and zarate has gone onto it and Mario Zarate or Mauro Zarate has put Bournemouth ahead. We did bring him in in a pack, we let him go, he's gone to Bournemouth for free and they have doubled their lead. Corner from Bayer. Swung in, and there's Mark Bartra on his debut. He's got a goal, he's pulled us back into it and as you can see from the stats, we do not deserve to be losing this match. Corner from Campbell, whipped in, cleared away by a Fobe, but Mbolo's got to the ball. Pulls it back to Bartra. Now Fernando, over to Campbell. Pato, can we get this equaliser? It's Tagliafico on the left, whips it in, and Vieto's there. And Vieto always has a poor rating throughout every match, and then the last 20 minutes, sometimes he just pops out of nowhere to get a goal. Well, the game has ended at 2 all, but I don't think that's fair. We had 18 shots on target today, two of which went into the goal. So the keeper for Bournemouth made 16 saves in this match. Bournemouth had virtually no efforts, but were just very, very clinical. Uh, I've told the team I'm not happy with them because I'm not happy. Um, if we'd won that game, we would have moved into the Champions League spot. So that's quite a disappointing result, really. Um, but hopefully we can make the ground up when we play Watford. Few changes to the team following that 
disappointing draw with Bournemouth. Breland Bolo is getting the start on the right wing. Um, John Stones has moved out to the right, so Paulista moves into the centre to partner Mark Bartra. Otherwise, it's as you were. Kapu playing the ball over for Akaka. He's got nobody up there with him. And here's Watson over to Kapu. Akaka, he doesn't need anybody with him with efforts like that. Watford have taken the lead, and we've really not kicked into gear in these opening 20 minutes. Taylor's free kick for Watford. Easy for Kune. But Kalasanak has somehow given away a penalty there. I don't think there's any danger of a Watford player getting that ball. And we could be about to go 2-0 down for the second match in a row. It's Watson who steps up. And he does score. We're 2-0 down. Even though we're dominating another match, this is really frustrating to watch. Peto over to Campbell. He sends the ball long and he's picked up Vieto. And Vieto does score. It's what he always does. He's got a goal back, but I think it's probably too late for us to salvage this game. Campbell's found Vieto, but he's offside, and that's a full-time whistle. It's been another frustrating performance. It was too little, too late from Vieto, and we've lost at home, which very rarely happens. I'm quite annoyed by it. We really need to turn our form around now that we're into the knockout stages of a European competition. Um, a few changes, because some players can't be registered for this tournament. So Munir is coming at right back. Paulista in at centre-back as Bartra sits this one out. Fernando's coming to the centre with William Carvalho on the bench. And Vea is back on the right wing. Svensson finds Tello. Navasino to Babacar. He's given the ball away to Fernando. Troy Dini, he's got Vieto through on goal here. He's got three defenders around him, but still goes. And Tatarasnu makes the save. Campbell's good run, finds Vieto. He's cutting across goal. He's still running on the diagonal. Vieto has hammered it into the bottom corner and he just cannot stop scoring. 34 goals now this season for Luciano Vieto. There is a full-time whistle and we have managed to pick up a win finally. It's 1-0 that we beat in Fiorentina, which is perfect as a home result because if we get one goal in the away game, we have the away advantage and Fiorentina will need to score three. We've changed a lot of positions around for this game. It's against Bristol City at home. We should be winning it reasonably comfortably. Uh, so Vieto is partnered by Panaranda for the first time in a long time. Fabian Delph also comes into the centre of midfield. Reese Oxford is starting his first game for a while. And Carnesis is making his debut in goal. Free kick from Freeman. And Reese Oxford has just pushed Flint to the ground for absolutely no reason. Bristol with a chance to take a very early lead. And Patterson has it saved. Carnesis with a perfect start to his debut. He's saved a penalty. Brian finds Abraham. There's a ball through to Smith. But Delph wins the tackle and he's re released Vieto over the top. Vieto clinical but straight at O'Donnell. Brian finds Freeman cutting inside. And it's another penalty. John Stones this time fouling the Bristol player. And it's... Up to the debut goalkeeper to try and save our skin for the second time in this match. Up steps Abraham. And it's another save. Carnesis has done it again. He saved two penalties on his debut. Fernando forward to Vieto into the last minute of the game. It's Rashford having a run at the defence. Back to Vea. Now Fernando. Out to John Stones. He whips the ball in, but O'Donnell takes it out of the sky. I thought there might be a last gasp goal for the team, but... We've been thoroughly outplayed at home by Bristol. It's just unacceptable. We're really not playing our best football at the moment. I don't know what's caused this. We had a lot of first-team players out on that pitch, and we just weren't able to beat them. Well, this is becoming a massive match in the context of our season. We've got a 1-0 home advantage, but we need to get an away goal quite quickly. We were able to rest a few players against Bristol. Whether that's a good thing or not, I'm not sure, given we've got a replay now. But Dini is back up top alongside Vieto. Uh, Carvalho is into the centre midfield with Campbell moving into the roaming playmaker role. And then we've got Stones, Munir, Palista and Kalazanak at the back. Kune back in goal despite um, Carnesis' two penalty saves in his last match. He cannot be registered for the UEFA Cup. Troy Dini outside to Carlos Vea. He steps into the pitch. Man free on the right. Still going himself. He's found Vieto in a great place. And Vieto doesn't miss from there. We've got the away goal. And Fiorentina now need to score three times to knock us out. Valera's corner. 
hits a crossbar so close for Fiorentina it's getting one back Peto over the top looking for Vieto Tomovic gets there and Jameo has made a mistake Troy Dini's just charged in there tapped the ball into pretty much an empty net and giving us a 2-0 lead surely unassailable now Peto through to Rashford gives the ball away and now Fiorentina can break it's Tello free on the left he's got pace he's fresh he beats one, pulls it back, and it's an easy goal for Fiorentina. Surely too late for them to do anything. Oh, and Troy Dini scored. I thought that was just going to harmlessly end the game because the full allocation of added time had been played. But Troy Dini gets a lucky header there. His second of the game, and we really have beaten Fiorentina quite comprehensively in the end. Over two legs. It's a very good away victory for the team. Uh, the referee does finally blow his whistle, and we are into the last 16 of the Europa League. Just the one change from that very good win away in Europe, and that's that Mark Bartra is returning into the centre of defence. John Stones gashed his head in that Europa League match, so that's the only change. We should be able to carry on where we left off, left off and get another good away win. Campbell. Looking for Vieto to make a run. It's Peto instead who finds Kalazanak in behind. He can send the ball across. Troy Dini's in there and Troy Dini scores again. His 23rd of the season to put us ahead. Paulista. Forward to Peto. Dini on the opposite side. He's got options. There's Munir out on the right. He can send the ball in. It's found Vieto who doesn't miss. He scores so many goals for us. Over 50 goals. Over 60 goals I think between Dini and Vieto this season. Corner from Gennaro into Byram, and it's come for Dawson on the line. It's an easy tap in for him. We should have got the ball away and didn't, and West Brom are back in it. Troy Dini looking for Vieto to make a run. There is the run. Vieto's in on the keeper, and he's found the gap. It's 3-1. Luciano Vieto gets his second goal of the game. Morrison trying to run between the defence, finds Henriquez. He's found Chadley, ball inside, Morrison's there. That was a brilliant passing move, and West Brom, with their two shots on target, have scored two goals. Guinero to Dawson. Morrison heads it on to Rondon. And Morrison's still going. He's found Fletcher, Henriquez in behind, and they've done it. They've scored three goals from three shots on target, and this is the story of our season, really. Cunha's launched that ball an absolute mile. Dawson gets the header away, but William finds Campbell. Now Dini into Vieto. Is there another pass? It's back to Campbell. Kalazanak with a bit of space on the left. Finds Peto. And Vieto flicks the header in. It's his hat-trick goal. It puts us 4-3 ahead. And we need to stop conceding goals now. Morrison. Plays the ball inside to Granero. He's been so good today. Fletcher to Morrison. Ball into Rondon. This doesn't look good. Morrison sends it across. And Chadley makes it 4 all. Well, the referees called an end to this eight-goal thriller. There were eight goals in the first hour of this game, and then nothing after that. That really wasn't good enough. We were 3-1 up in that game and still didn't win it, which is just absolutely unacceptable. Uh, had we won that, we would have been in a much better position. We would have gone above Southampton, at least temporarily. Um, we're still in that top four hunt. We're only three points behind Arsenal. It's not all over yet, but we do need to start turning these draws into wins because otherwise we are going to start to drop off the pace at the worst possible time with so many cup games still to come. It's been quite a disappointing episode. It doesn't look too bad on the form because we only lost one match, but we threw away so many points in this game. Um, next episode, we've got Bristol in the FA Cup replay. Sunderland at home, then the Europa League last 16 is against Mainz, which I think we should be getting through quite easily. Middlesbrough also in there, and I think we end the episode with an away match at Stamford Bridge, which will be quite tough, but it's um, one of only two tough matches left in the league season. That's why I've still got hope we can qualify for the Champions League, but we need to be kicking into gear because we've been just outside those top four places for so long. Um, if you did enjoy the players that we packed today, don't forget that stunning debut from the goalkeeper, uh, Carnizas, when he saved two penalties. Do subscribe to the channel. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed those penalty saves. And until next time, see ya.